school. Yeah. All right, tell me that they never seen that. Paint yeah. fat, don't be shaking your fingers, then you lean back. And welcome back to another episode of Viti Vibes, the show where inspired youth inspire youth. I'm your host, Shannon Pramal, and I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. As always, we want our viewers to know that your involvement is highly encouraged. So please keep the comments, feedback, and suggestions coming so we can make future episodes even better. To kick off this episode, we have a special interview with our guest, Selena Reddy. So please have a look. Hello, and welcome back to Viti Vibes, the show where inspired youth inspire youth. I'm your host, Shannon Pramal. And thank you for joining us today. Today, in our studio, we have a special guest, and her name is Selena Reddy. So, thank you, Selena, for joining me today. <laughs> no How are you? No problem. I feel amazing. How are you? I'm doing good, tired, as always. Yeah. I know I ask everybody to come. I always say this. Everyone comes early to record these shows, so I yeah. really appreciate you being here, taking the time out. And I know this is actually your first yes, interview, <laughs> TV, radio, like just first interview first in general. First interview of everything. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. So I'm glad <laughs> it's the first one here, and I'm glad I get to be the one talking to you today. Um, so to kick things off, I'll get you to actually start to introduce yourself to our audience the way you want to. Hi, my name is Selena. I am 21. In my spare time, I am a mental health inclusion advocate as well as a disability advocate on Instagram. I was diagnosed with seizure disorder and tuberous sclerosis disorder a few months after I was born. And it slowly, my seizure disorder became epilepsy because of the frequent seizures I had growing up as a child. And tuberous sclerosis disorder is just basically um, a rare genetic disorder where you have the chance of growing any non-cancerous tumors in any vital part of your organs. And um, yeah, that's why I advocate for this because I have had experiences in my life that I don't want anyone else to have and I just want to be by their side, promote inclusion, and just be there for them. In my professional life, I am an early childhood educator. I graduated back in 2019 at Douglas and yeah, that's all about me. That's awesome. Yeah, you said mentioned so you are actually a person would uh, consider yourself a person of disability. Yes. And I see uh, I follow you on social media and I see yeah. you advocate a lot for that especially. And I think that's so beautiful because there's so many people that need that kind of voice and especially yeah. people with disabilities, right? Because some people can't actually like advocate for themselves. So it's, I find it really inspiring for you to be able to do that on behalf of uh, everybody. So thank you for that. No problem. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about like your professional career, I guess. So you said um, you work as an ECE. Yeah. So how did you get into this career? Where did you go to school? And tell us a little bit more about that. So not a lot of people know this about me, but when I was like age 6 to 16, I went to Sunday school. And at the age of 12, I was assisting with like the preschool children and elementary school children with like bhajan and mantras, so teaching them that. Oh, okay. So I started learning and loving being with children with that. And the main reason why I joined early childhood education is because I recognized that not all children have that safe place at home. Mm -hmm. And I kind of wanted to bring that safe, trustworthy place at like a daycare or childcare so that they have that escape. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. that's super important, especially, and you mentioned it, that not everybody has a safe space at home, right? Yeah. And so that's really cool that you have that space outside of there and teaching yeah. them budgets and mantras, right? <laughs> like, that must be fun for you to do and teach them, especially. So how yeah. old were these children that we were teaching? So preschool would be, like, 3 to 6. Okay, yeah. And then the elementary schools would be, like, 7 to about 12. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been working with um, children? I started in October 2019, so it's three months away until two years. <laughs> okay, awesome. So where'd you go to school? What ended up making you pursue where, or where, what ended up making you want to go to the school that you went to? Um, I had a few friends go into Douglas College, and they mm -hmm. were starting in the early childhood education program, so I okay, thought yeah. I'd just join with them. Okay, so you yeah. uh, with your friends kind of thing. That's nice. Yeah. I always, like, 
when I, I went to school, I didn't have nobody. <laughs> so I like I get so jealous like, of like people that go with their friends, and it's so nice to actually have that support system. Yeah. And like I know like your guys's program is like super tight knit too, right? Yeah. Because you're stuck with like kind of the same people for that whole time. Oh, yeah. So that's really cool. I wish I got to experience that. But <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. So what's like I guess the best thing about your job uh, working as an early childhood educator? It's like a job where you can support children, but you mm. also have those fun moments when, like, they will say the funniest, weirdest things ever, oh, yeah. and they will make you laugh. And it will also make your day because they will make something for you. Like, recently I had this child make a chalk drawing, and it had their family and included me in it. And Aww. it just touched my heart, and I literally cried. That like, is so it's cute. Just, it makes you feel so loved and appreciated. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, actually, I work with kids too, or worked with kind of <laughs> pre-COVID, yeah. um, but a lot of people don't know, I work with children um, from preschool, elementary school, mm -hmm. youth camps, like teenagers, like I've worked through them all, <laughs> and they are just, like working with kids is quite the journey, it's quite the experience, yeah. it is, they're so funny, and some of the most bizarre things happen. So I want to ask you, what's, like, one of the funniest or, like, most bizarre things that have happened when you were working with, like, children? Um, that's a really hard question because there's a lot of them. Yeah, right? But I would say there's this child that keeps talking about this why the chicken crossed the road okay. joke, and she will keep saying it, like, over and over and over, and she will just change the answers at the end. <laughs> so it's just so funny, because usually we think, like, there's one joke, there's one answer. Mm -hmm. But with this, like, she changes it every time, and it's different. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, like, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're always, like, on, on edge, like, oh, what's she going to say today? <laughs> yeah. That's so cute. <laughs> um, so I know, obviously, children are really fun to be around. They're, you can yeah. learn a lot from them, oh, too. Yeah. But they're also kind of a headache, too, sometimes. <laughs> but especially, like, when you're not in, like, the right mindset or, like, mm -hmm. you're not feeling yeah. okay or having a bad day, right? Like, children can really get on your case, too. <laughs> yes. um, so I want to ask, like, what's, I guess, like, some of the biggest struggles that you've dealt with, like, in this field that you work in? Um, I would say, like, there are children in that I've had that are like, they are going through their own mental health struggles. Mm -hmm. So some of them were going through um, divorce and separation with their oh, parents. Yeah. Um, they had just gone through like a tragedy with some, like with a pet or with their guardians or someone they knew. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I th I, like yeah, that. it's yeah. definitely hard to do your job as a, like a childcare provider when you're, the children are really not able like you said before like some children don't have a safe space at home yeah. and I remember like having a lot of these children I worked at like some places some sites where there's a lot of like low-income families and abuse is like a problem at home and so when they come to camps it's like that's their only safe space and it's really hard to be able to get through to some children because of like all the struggles they kind of go through at home but it, I think that's kind of like where we enjoy our jobs the most where it's like we can make that child's like eight hours of the day or six hours of the day that they're yeah. with us at least good yeah. so they can look forward to coming back, you know, and have that place where they can confine in us, have fun with us, right? Yeah. And so I think that's kind of like where we try and thrive, yeah. right? But definitely, I totally agree with you on that. Um, but anyways, so as someone like that works with children, obviously, um, what do you think are like some things that like affect the way a child behaves? Like, some factors. Mm -hmm. So these factors could be, like, something could be happening at home. Mm -hmm. Something could be happening, like, in the daycare. Like, maybe children don't want to be around that specific child, and that child can feel it. Oh, yeah. Um, things can be happening at school, like bullying. Oh, school, yeah. There's yeah. so much that could happen at school. Definitely. And, like, even in this COVID pandemic, we don't recognize it, but some children, they are not exposed to, like, being around children or mm -hmm. being around, like, adults. So mm -hmm. it's a completely new experience for yeah. them. So they feel so overwhelmed, and they're adjusting just to this time and period. Mm -hmm. So we also have to keep that in mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, so, like, children are obviously, like, a lot more different than adults where they're not able to, like, comprehend and understand, like, social cues and like emotional like 
um, situations and how to like cope with them, obviously. And dealing with mental health, especially for children, is a different experience than that of adults because yeah. we understand what mental health is, right? But children don't. They yeah. just know that they're sad and then that's like, that's it. That's it. Their, their world's ending, yeah. right? So I want to ask you like a little bit more about like what are some um, ways that or signs or actions that you're able to tell that a child is struggling with their mental health? So what I've seen in my child, early childhood education experience would be like, it varies for a child. So like sometimes they will be so quiet and distant and they'll be mm -hmm. so clo closed off, like mm -hmm. they will protect themselves. Sometimes these children, like they don't know how to express it. And just like us, they can get really irritated or frustrated easily. And mm -hmm. I've seen like them flipping chairs, throwing toys because they don't know how to, oh, yeah. you know, keep their emotions in check, how to express that. And also, I would say I've seen children where they will literally, just for attention because they feel like they're not getting that attention, mm -hmm. they will go into children's play spaces and they will, like, break down the toys, they will take it oh, away yeah. from them, just because, you know, the teacher or the child children will be like, hey, like, you took my toy, and they get that, just that small moment of attention satisfies them. Mm -hmm. And I've had one time where, like, a child has actually came to me and said something concerning, and mm -hmm. I just said, why do you feel that way? And that child said, well, I don't know, but I feel like this all the time. Mm -hmm. So children, even though they have, like, we believe they have small minds, but they also have, like, a mind to process things. Mm -hmm. They have a mind, they have, like, smart minds. They can yeah. handle and sense a lot of things. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And they're definitely, like, they're very aware of their environment, yes, right? very. And yeah. so, like, that definitely affects them, and they know that, but they just don't know why or how. Like, they're not able to put two and two together the way we kind of yeah. think and, like, are able to map it out. Um, but in your experience, like, what are some, like, common, like, mental health struggles or mental health issues that you've seen with some children? This is one of the biggest ones that I really want to put out is, like, when... Parents say they don't have a favorite child, but they do, <laughs> and they'll act like no, but the child can sense when you love one child over the other, and they'll be like, why you don't love me the same way? Even in daycare, it's like, if a child is more easygoing, or more, just like more easy in the daycare day, compared to a child that is like so challenging and difficult, then they tend the Early childhood educators tend to go gravitate towards that child that's more easygoing mm -hmm. and that child that's, like, so challenging and difficult. Mm -hmm. Like, that child feels so isolated. Yeah. And um, I'd say tragedy because there was this one child where, like, she lost her pet cat during summer. Oh, okay. And you could see, like, when she talks about the pet cat being up there in the stars, you could uh. see, like, she, want, she was wanting to like she wanted to like break down yeah. but you know she didn't like let it get to her I mm -hmm. guess so you can see that and also like parent separation and divorce when like yeah, shared custody like those children they don't get to see those two parents together anymore mm -hmm. and they're either at one area for like a weekend and the next area or mm -hmm. they don't get to see like that one parent anymore and they have like that custody to that one parent mm -hmm. it's really difficult for them yeah totally agree with everything you said right there those are some really like important like issues that I think are definitely happening with children yeah. right and I think in my experience working with kids like two of the things I've noticed a lot is like anger and yeah. anxiety yeah. and they can both be interchangeable um yeah. with each other at times and like Obviously, for some children, it's one or the other, right? But mm -hmm. a lot of the time, like like you mentioned, with like especially like parent um, cases, like cu custody cases, like yeah. that's a really like touchy subject and difficult. Like you obviously, yeah. we don't want to bring it up to the child. We don't talk about it, right? Yeah. Um, but like it's definitely a touchy subject, and you can tell a lot of the time when like the child's like either like just angry towards like the whole world because they're just like in an awkward situation where they don't know what's going on, especially, like, with adults, right? And it's not like their parents would obviously sit down with them, or we don't know that, right? Like, there's so many things that could be going on behind closed doors that you don't know about, like, with yeah. that sort of situation. And then with the anxiety thing, like, a lot of children are just very, like, like, they're not sure, like, they've never had kind of, like, a secure place, whether it was, like, 
in a situation where there's like a parent custody battle or if it's like um for example just moving around a lot too because some children they don't get the uh, pleasure of being able to feel secure in yeah. one spot right so they're always changing environments changing schools going to yeah. different daycares and they're never able to actually find like just one place to stay and I think that's something that I've noticed a lot too like just anxiety like having to go into new place and like meet new people and it's just so much stimulation right happening yeah. and especially at such a young age like they don't know like how to comprehend that and like be able to deal with it too yeah. right so I want to ask you next like what are some like I guess good coping strategies um, that children can use, like some good mechanisms for that? So I believe one of the things that I like about my daycare is there's like a time period where before bedtime we have like a mindfulness time. Okay. So they sit on their beds and we just tell them to close their eyes and just breathe in and out. Even if we just simply introduce it, like mm -hmm. they get the hang of that and it calms them down. They can ask, if they feel comfortable, they can ask for, like, a hug or a squeeze or a rub on their arm. Mm -hmm. Or they can even have someone by their side just to keep them company, know that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. And also when, like, at home or at the daycare, they will have, like, a comfort toy, like a stuffy or even mm -hmm. a blanket so they can just touch it, feel yeah. it, smell it, do whatever just to help them calm down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what we do for, like... So, uh, one of my workplaces is that we get the parents or like even the children themselves the, like a Ziploc bag and fill it with like whatever snacks like non-perishable mm -hmm. snacks or like your favorite toy and like we just keep it in one big bin so like wow. it's like the, um, an emergency yeah. bin right if everything else fails you have some snacks and a toy or something you can go to you know and yeah. just to, like kind of calm you down and I think mindfulness, you mentioned that, that's super yeah. important. I remember introducing that to, like, my teenagers that I worked with a couple uh -huh. years ago. And that was when it was, like, a super, like, new thing. Like, mindfulness, what is this, yeah. right? So do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, so I believe parents could definitely incorporate that in their child's everyday life. Mm -hmm. So, like, even if they don't know, like, the basics of, like, how to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, like, you could just start day one, just close your eyes and just get that, get used to that. Mm -hmm. And then second day, they could just, like, breathe in and out generally, like, just out through your, in through your mouth, out through your mouth. And then the third day, they could do, like, you know, like, mm -hmm. breathing through your nose, out through your mouth, and then just... The fourth day, they could do, like, a visualization, and just fifth day, they could continue that and see how mm -hmm. it goes with their... Yeah, I think breathing is the most, like, underrated thing that people think... Yeah. It's, like, a basic human process, but a lot of people forget how to breathe. I, I'm guilty of charge. <laughs> forget how to breathe yeah. in times where it's, like, super high anxiety, and yeah. breathing is definitely one thing I think people everyone should practice, right? Like, it should be in every yeah. workplace, like, training, like, learning how to just be able to calm down in situations that are super yeah. like sti overstimulating right and definitely like I I've even on the phone with like my friends that are my age right it's just like you have to like get them to calm down learn how to breathe like in through your nose out through your mouth okay wait and then just going through that process right yeah so like teaching them young is definitely super important as well because once they got that yeah. established then right then you don't like you'll be able to do it yeah um like as like a kind of little habit afterwards when you're older and you know you're in that situation but anyways I want to kind of like shift towards like asking you more about like your childhood experiences because you said you um, identify as a person with disabilities and so with your experience growing up um, have you ever dealt with like mental health struggles and if so like what were they yeah I have dealt with mental health struggles like around my disabilities with epilepsy and TSC um, I would always end up going to the school office because I would have absence seizures. Absence seizures is when you would just stare off and you would have no clue that you would stare off mm -hmm. and they would just kind of document it every time I went there. Okay. And the kids would bully me, they would ridicule me because of that and I would always be seen as different. No one wanted me part of their like work group and my mom would help me like they would try to help me by like okay read this book read that book and I would try everything but mm -hmm. it still wouldn't happen and also I had like a support network like of teachers at school so yeah. like they would be helping me with my progress and learning with every subject 
And with that, they would just laugh at me like, hey, we don't have anyone to help us with that. Like, why are you, like, having this one Oh, like, getting extra support. Yeah. They think you're, like, cheating or whatever. Or, like, you get an advantage, in a sense. And that really hits core because, like, it made me feel so stupid and dumb. Like, Mm. these people, they don't have that. Like, why do I need that, right? Mm. It's just kind of, like, a shame aspect. Mm Mm-hmm. As well, like, people need to recognize, like, people with disabilities, they also have other things going on. Growing up, I witnessed abuse. I could see, like, what alcoholism did to a person, how it Mm -hmm. changes them into a complete monster. Um, There was also a time, maybe, like, five years ago, where we were stalked even during my Douglas College practicums. And that was hard because you could see the person, like, follow us in a car, or he would call Mm -hmm. us up, like, randomly with different international numbers. Oh, man. Yeah, so... That's bizarre. Yeah, so it was... It's, like, it's such a mental health um, struggle for me with all of that. Mm -hmm. I am diagnosed with BPD, Borderline Personality Disorder, and PTSD, Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. Mm -hmm. And what I've done to overcome that was like the indoor lights if you've seen on instagram oh yeah yeah i've seen those i've been thinking about it so tell me like is it worth it oh it's so worth it because even yesterday i was stressing for this interview (laughs) i was just like okay i'm just gonna put these indoor lights on i'm just gonna dance sam smith i said just sam Sam smith (laughs) but it's just so nice just to get your mind off and just Mm -hmm. do the craziest moves even if you don't know how to dance just do Mm -hmm. it i also wear my mala in most of my pictures and like it just helps bring that um positivity like into my body and Mm -hmm. connects me with god i do karaoke so bollywood english songs but in kirtan i've been singing since i was six okay so that brings me close to god and just remember that spirituality isn't for everyone so Mm -hmm. don't force that on a person that doesn't (laughs) believe in it yeah and um yeah yeah that's crazy (laughs) like you've said so much in that short span of time um but that indoor light thing because i know especially like during the winter season when it's super dark like so early like a lot of people with seasonal depression especially like that uh it's like the one that glows like it's just one light like that kind of warm golden light and it just makes it feel like as if there's like sun in your house and light, right? Yeah. And so I was thinking about that, but I was like, oh, I don't know. So <laughs> I'm glad you <laughs> brought that up, so I know. Um, but yeah, so with all this going on in your life and everything, so what are some things that you want to be able to like do to help teach kids like what mm-hmm. how to keep and maintain a good um, mental health? I think the number one thing out there is like to acknowledge that you don't want to be your child's first bully Mm -hmm. you want to be their first um supporter so like i know a lot of parents they'll complain about their children criticize them judge them they will compare you to like your cousins or whoever and that does not make them want to be like the way you want them to be like it just damages them Mm -hmm. internally their self-worth yeah so like i would just say like be there for them, listen to what they have to say, don't use that I'm an adult so I'm right, you're a child, you're wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Just listen to what they're saying, be there for them. Um, you can even incorporate mindfulness, like I said before, and physical activity is so important. So you could do a walk to the park, just take that time for br- breathing fresh air, or like a yoga, there's so much yoga mm-hmm. videos on YouTube. YouTube is yeah. like so helpful. And just... Yeah, just be there for your child because at the end, like, you don't want to lose your child. Yeah. You gave birth to this child for a reason. Just, like, help them mm-hmm. grow in a healthy way. Yeah, love them unconditionally and, like, guide them yeah. through the process, right? It's not always going to be easy. Yeah. But anyways, we're almost about yep. <laughs> wrapping up time for our show today. But I want to ask you, because I know you got a couple things happening right now. So what are some, like, short-term, long-term goals that you have? I am starting my education assistant program in KPU okay. in September. Congrats. So I am super excited for that because I'll be more hands-on with special needs children in a variety of disabilities. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also having a book coming out. It's in the publication process. I don't know when it will be ready, but... It is a process. Yeah. We were talking earlier. It is a process. 
but it is called We Shine the Same, and basically it's about how children with disabilities or people with disabilities in general, like we are looked as different, we are looked as cursed or doomed, and that's not true because we all shine the same in a way where we have different qualities, personalities, we all have our weaknesses and strengths, we all have like ambition and interests. Mm -hmm. There's, and we all go through the process of love and yeah. heartbreak. So it just highlights a lot on that. And uh, long term, I really want to disconnect from social media down the road. Because <laughs> it's, cool. yeah. it's very mentally draining and um, it time is. consuming. Yeah. And it's the smartest industry out there. Yeah. Because you know that it impacts you negatively, but you always find a way to get to suck that. back into it yeah yeah so totally. like i know the moment when i'm ready down the road like i'll disconnect through everything and i'll just feel that luggage lifted off my shoulders mm -hmm. so that's that's definitely like something yeah. good that like you're able to try and like come to terms with that like you know that it is draining right and having to go through that process and being able to disconnect i don't think i'll be able to i think i'm just gonna keep getting excited but i'm glad you're gonna try and do that um let me know how that goes definitely i also want to donate to like charities with mental health and uh, disabilities because there was a few times where during christmas i was in the hospital mm -hmm. and that sucks because you want to be out there yeah. celebrating it and so i want to like put a smile to their faces and just make a difference mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. No problem. Yeah, you're always welcome back here uh, whenever you need. Um, when this book drops, definitely let me know. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much, and uh, we'll catch you right back after this. <laughs> so that wraps up our show for today, but I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did bringing it to you. Remember that this is your show too, so please feel free to let us know of any comments, feedback, or suggestion you may have. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and also share the videos with your families and friends. So be sure to follow our Instagram and Facebook page as well, which is at BT Vibes TV, for more behind the scenes and all sorts of other content. I also look forward to having you all tune in next week. Until then, stay safe and stay healthy. I'm your host, Shannon Pramal, signing off. Vinaka. Yeah. 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 Yeah.